Alright guys, another day, another sneaker review. As long as I can keep hitting these shoes for retail, keep making DoorDash money on the side, and keep on being able to get shoes for good prices, not even just necessarily retail, we'll keep doing these reviews if you guys like them. So today, you guys read the title. The shoe that we got to review is the Jordan 1 Low Coral or the Bleach Coral Colorway. Um, these actually released around three months ago, but they just restocked on the Nike Sneakers app. And many were able to hit them actually, being as these are not a very limited or highly sought after colorway. They're going for right around retail on the secondary market as many Jordan 1 lows have been doing such as that powder blue pair that we reviewed last week that you can see right in the back. We're going to be doing a little comparison in a few minutes but first let's talk about this shoe a little bit. So the Bleach Coral Jordan 1 Low OG it is crucial that these are the OG they have Nike Air on the tongue, Wings logo on the back, that usual Jordan 1 Low shape all around here's the front of the sneaker as well you can see that the colorway is kind of like a bread toe almost or like any of the yellow toes or the court purples or the pine greens even like a shattered backboard 1.0 it's got the color on the toe black around the toe and then the color on the back the UNC lows are a little bit different but as I said we'll get to that in a little bit um, so I was able to come across these because of a sneaker stash thanks to my discord which is Legacy Kicks. So if you guys don't know what that, what like sneaker reselling discords are, they pretty much just help you find, like figure out when sneakers are dropping and such and such. So this is the shoe that I ended up with. As you can see there is actually a tag that's more interesting than usual. I don't know if you guys can really see it, but I'm just gonna read it out. It says, please note, natural crack seen on the upper is normal due to the random crackle air ink application. So basically the black leather on this shoe is kind of like a cracked leather. I don't, you guys can probably see that it's not like smooth leather like the one on most Jordan 1's. It's more of like a textured feeling leather. And obviously this is not like genuine leather. It's a, it's a Jordan brand shoe and it's a GR at that. It's not even a collab so nothing much to be expected here. Um, let's do a little press test. As you can see the quality is pretty mediocre I mean there's almost no give to this leather it feels pretty nice so it's like a rough short head suede and there's something about this colorway that just screams out spring summer which is ironic that I hate these in the fall because in my opinion not really a fall sneaker but nonetheless I think these are pretty hard to rock in my opinion Harder to rock than that UNC pair back there because obviously it's kind of like a black, white, and pink shoe. I guess with this shirt it would go decent, but not an exact match. I feel like you would kind of have to under underdress in terms of like wearing quiet colors to the top and bottom in order to wear these every day because wearing a pink top like consistently is going to be hard for most guys. I mean, I know me personally, I don't really have many pink shirts or pants or, I don't have any pink pants, but yeah, let's check out the other side of the shoe. This is the left pair. So the tag is on the right pair. The left pair comes with a pink pair of laces, a coral pair. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna give you guys an on feet because I'm not really trying to undies this shoe right this second. I just undies a bunch of shoes and I'm going to take a little bit of a break from wearing shoes at least for like a week or two. I'll probably wear them eventually. I mean, they don't go for very much on the secondary market. I'd probably even lose money if I were to sell them 
ride out on StockX or GOAT, which is insane. I mean, I know if this shoe came out a year ago, they'd probably go for around 180 to 200 beans easily, just like that, a quick flip. But now we get the chance to wear all these super nice shoes like this one, and then also like this one too. I mean, these shoes both should be going for at least $200 in my opinion. Super clean colorways, really OG color blocking. This is also a Jordan 1 low OG. And in my opinion, these shoes are pretty like similar to one another. I believe these are kind of like the most similar of the Jordan 1 low pack that's come out so far. In terms of materials, these have much better leather. As you can see, they push in pretty far. There's a lot of give to it. The blue leather is not the best, but the white leather, very, very nice. And these broke in really well. I wore them for about a week straight, maybe like three, four days, if I'm being honest. And they broke in nicely, so now I can wear them and really never be uncomfortable. And that's what I love about Jordans and like Dunks. Once you break them in, they are much more comfortable. So it is a little bit unfair to compare these because these are like not broken in at all. So there's no give. But this cracked leather is definitely substantially worse than this leather, which has an insane amount of give and is very high quality. So if you were to pick up one shoe, definitely have to be this one. If you're gonna play resale, they're worth pretty much the same on the resale market. And the quality of the UNCs is better, colorway is better, and the wearability is more plentiful, definitely, because blue is just a very wearable colorway. And yeah, as far as the box is concerned on these corals, this is the front side of the box, size 10 as usual and the label reads Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OG Black Slash Bleach Coral Dash White for any legit checking purposes as I said in the last Jordan 1 Low video the size of the shoe on the box is usually very big it's not in that small font like it is on the Jordan 1 High so if yours is small you probably have a replica pair but honestly, I wouldn't be too worried about reps on these because no one's really trying to make a rep of a $130 shoe that's going for 145 you know? It's like, it's not even worth buying reps, much less making reps. So yeah, I didn't really mean to put this shoe down just when compared to the UNC low. I would argue that the UNC low is better, but like this is a very cool shoe it kind of reminds me of the jordan one high rust pink which is going for like seven thousand dollars we're gonna put it right here and <coughs> yeah those are very very limited and sought after same kind of bleached coral ish colorway and yeah these are really nice i could imagine these going with like some blue jeans and a natural or a white top and yeah that would probably be my fit for them so i'll probably break them out on one friday at some point i just don't really want to wear them right now and like go door dashing in them because there's no point in on DSing a shoe to go work or do something like that or go to the gym and whatnot which is what most of my days consist of as I am in my grinding years right now. So in terms of resale predictions on these, I honestly think that they're not gonna go up for a while, but once they do go up, they'll probably go to around 180 to 185, just because it's a very nice colorway. And the Jordan 1 low OGs, the only ones I can think of off the top of my head are the Royals, the Mystic Navies, these, the UNCs, the Neutral Grays, and the Shattered Backboard, or the Starfish ones, which are probably my favorite. But obviously, these and the UNCs are the ones that are going for the least. They just came out, and they're both extremely nice shoes. I'd argue that they're probably second and third after that Starfish pair, which I just 
absolutely love. I love orange in general, as you can tell. So I'm kind of biased. But yeah, if you're bowling on a budget, this is a great shoe. Pick it up right now. Just don't expect it to be insanely wearable because it probably isn't. In terms of the comfort, I'm just going to go based on the UNC pair because it's probably almost exactly the same, if not exactly the same. The first two days you wear them, they're going to be very stiff and like have almost no give to them. But then as you start walking around them more, you'll discover that they're a pretty good casual sneaker to wear every day and that they're not like super uncomfortable. They're more comfortable than the highs because the highs lock your ankle in more. So yeah, with that being said guys, I'm going to show you guys the inside of the shoe real quick because I don't believe that I have just as yet. But here you go, Nike Air and a size 10 tag on the inside. If I were to wear these, I might even go for double coral laces because I like my shoes very loud and with that vibrancy going on. Hence why all my shoes are pretty bright. But yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support on the last video. It means a lot and I'll see you all soon.